Let me get this out of the way. Neo 2 feels exactly the same as the first game. There are a few tweaks here and there, but overall the visual experience is notably similar, to the point where I can share a screenshot of either and, aside from the updated user interface, you'd have a hard time picking which is which. On the surface, the gameplay mechanics appear just as similar, with many aspects returning such as stances, weapon types, and skills. But upon deeper inspection, there are a ton of little tweaks on the back end that tighten up the overall experience. In my review of the original Neo, I praised the game for its ability to properly introduce players to its vast array of mechanics without overwhelming them. In fact, the first game featured so many different ways to approach combat that it wasn't until hour 80 when I felt competent enough to use them all effectively. Its sequel, at least according to its recent open beta, smartly refuses to pile on tons of additional mechanics and instead ensures you have a firm grasp on what's already there. It does so through a variety of tutorials in the first level that introduce you to things like stance switching, drop attacks, and recharging your key. That, and it even provides a companion for assistance as you get used to things once again. But this doesn't mean that the game is easier. From the get-go, the Neo 2 beta lives up to its predecessor in terms of challenge. One of the first enemies is a big yokai beast that killed me not once, not twice, but upwards of seven times before I could beat it. Of course, part of that was due to the return of the game's deceiving level design, which makes paths look a lot wider than they are, and causes me to fall into the water over and over again. But that level design isn't an excuse for me not being good enough, and Neo 2 makes sure to show me that I'm not good enough. In typical Neo fashion, my four hours in this beta consisted of dying to surprise death pits, humans, zombie creatures, goops, one-eyed hammer cyclops, a sleek, poisonous giant snake, enemy players, and literally myself. I appreciate that developer Team Ninja kept the difficulty high for this open beta, as it shows that Neo isn't something that's going to bend down and take it easy for its players even in its open beta format. Every victory here is a well-earned one. That said, as similar as it may be to the original game, Neo 2 does have some gameplay tweaks that, while initially seemed fairly unassuming, prove themselves to be valuable additions that will very much make the difference between your life and your death. Just don't go in expecting anything revolutionary. First is the introduction of Soul Cores, which tie to your Guardian Spirit super attack and act as customizable moves that help whittle down enemy key and give yourself a few seconds of breathing time. These moves, known as Yokai skills, are limited by Anima, which was useful for PvP in the first game. Now it prevents you from spamming attacks. You earn Soul Cores by defeating the different Yokai creatures you come across, and by gathering one, you're essentially gaining control of one of their powerful moves. I didn't care for most of these attacks in the beta as a lot of them required me to get closer to a monster than I'd have liked and then sit vulnerable for a few seconds as the attack goes through. But there was one move that I received early on which came from the Enki Yokai monster, and I thought it was absolutely perfect. It allowed me to throw a spear from any distance away. Like seriously, you jump up into the air and whip a spear at the enemy, and it breaks down enemy key levels and brings you one step closer to dealing massive damage once you get their energy bar all the way down. What's great about this emphasis on yokai powers is it forced Team Ninja to spice up the enemies a bit, since you're pulling the abilities directly from them. One of my biggest complaints about the first game was that the enemies felt much too samey. Neo 2 remedies that with much greater variety of enemies. But unlike the first game, this means you're fighting yokai a lot more than humanoids or other enemy types, which makes the challenge that much harder, and that can be frustrating for some players. That said, I view this as a way to experiment with all of the different mechanics the game includes and continually search for new ways to one-up different kinds of monsters. There's always a way to take one of the yokai down. What's great about a game like Neo is there's such a variety of weapons and items and skills that you can use to turn the tide of pretty much any battle, but that does require a lot of sitting down and figuring out how the game mechanics work with one another. Along with more yokai comes something called the Dark Realm, a space that replicates the effects of standing in a yokai pool, notably a drain on your key recharging. These realms are littered throughout the different levels and you must eliminate all of the yokai monsters to be rid of it and explore the area unaffected. Bosses will also periodically phase you into the Dark Realm, which adds a significant layer of challenge to an already difficult fight. But there is an entirely new skill tree that helps mitigate a lot of these effects and even the fight a little bit. There's also a new Switchglaive weapon that scales with your magic skill. It's pretty overpowered, and it allowed me to defeat a ton of enemies with only a couple of swings, but it's really fun to use. 
It features multiple forms and it's great for both crowd control and one-on-one -on -one fights. It's really similar to the saw cleaver weapon from Bloodborne. It absolutely destroys any humanoid enemies and does substantial damage to any yokai as well. The guardian spirit living weapon is also a little different. Instead of your chosen spirit taking over and providing some sort of element to your weapon like the first game, it now turns you into a yokai with an associated weapon type in a mode called the yokai shift. For example, one might turn you into a flaming beast with a fiery chain, replacing your currently equipped weapon and providing you extra damage for a brief period. Some might find this sudden weapon switch really disorienting, but I think it gives each guardian spirit more of a unique feeling. Plus, some of the character designs are really cool. Spirits are also broken up into three different types, Brute, Feral, and Phantom. Each one varies up your stats a little bit and allows you to pull off a different form of what's called a yokai parry. A parry from a brute guardian spirit, for example, allows you to parry any attack once the enemy flashes red. I've yet to nail the timing on this one, but it seems like a skill worth mastering down the line. You can even use it randomly and just sort of punch the enemy in the face, which will do some stun damage from time to time. Now, a lot of these larger changes tie directly into gameplay and making the yokai more of a threatening force and integrate more into the game, but there are smaller quality of life touches too. One of my favorites is the Kodama Bazaar, which can be accessed at any shrine and allows you to buy items like elixirs, arrows, bullets, charms, bombs, and much more with a new currency called Divine Rice, which you gather by offering items to the shrine. You offer a ton of items to the shrine throughout the game anyways, so you're just going to gather up a bunch of divine rice and be able to spend it whatever you want. The ability to buy elixirs whenever you need is really helpful, especially if you keep wasting your extras fighting a hard boss over and over again, which happens a lot throughout Neo. There's also a really deep character creator now, as opposed to playing as a select protagonist like in the first game. It's about as deep as any Bethesda creator or any other creator you've experienced in some of your favorite RPGs, and it should really cater well to those who want to dig in deep and customize every aspect of their character's looks. Neo 2's level design is also fantastic. The few levels we see in the beta cater much more to verticality than the ones in the first game, and there are a variety of hills to climb and monsters that sit on top of them and throw bombs down at you from. A lot of the levels loop into each other now, eliminating the need to add additional shrines and providing a little more respect for players' time than the first game did. There are also a ton of hidden enemies that jump out from behind you, and a bunch of secret paths that aren't immediately apparent that I really appreciate. It really just becomes a game of how often can we trick the player, how often can we make them think this is a safe spot before someone jumps out behind or a bomb comes up at you from the ceiling, or a giant ape leaps out of nowhere and smashes you to the ground. Also, just like the first game, many pathways are incredibly narrow, eliminating your chances of cheesing enemies and forcing you to get right up in with them and learn the combat mechanics. In the full game, I hope to see a lot more colorful and natural levels like the caves and fields seen here, as opposed to the castles and fortresses that littered the first game. Overall, the beta proves that the Neo formula was already quite strong and only needed some slight tweaks and additions to make it even more fun to play. Again, just don't expect the overhaul that each Witcher game received. Treat it as more of a Destiny-type sequel, which could be considered a little bit more of an expansion than a fully-fledged sequel. If you like the first one, chances are you're going to like what's on offer here.